My name is Danny B, and if you haven't figured it out yet, AI is taking over the world. And one day, they'll control our trains. But until then, we're going to keep having fun with AI in the way that we can right now through AI image creation. My goal for this video is to use Trains 2022 and use Bing AI to generate an image for me to replicate in the game. So with that being said, let's waste no time and head on over to Bing AI. All right, so I'm in the mood for some classic Tennessee railroading or Kentucky or something like that. So let's let's type this prompt here. Let's say uh, modern, realistic freight train goes through mountainous area in southern United States somewhere between Kentucky and Georgia. And let's see what that will give us. All right, so it looks like the AI wants us to do some Norfolk Southern work here, judging by what I see here. Let's click on these, and I have four optional images here, and I'm going to pick only one to make my world, or a little module, if you will, based off what AI has given us. Option number one is interesting. It looks like we've got Norfolk Southerns, I would say, closest thing I can get to these. Uh, looks like uh, maybe three engines? and maybe a bunch of auto wrecks behind it, it looks like. Um, double mainline, some hills, lots of mountains, a big valley with a river, a dirt road, and lots of trees, no civilization. This could be feasible, probably could lay out um, probably four base maps and work up that, if I had to guess. It's basically just, you know, a little winding, a uh, double main, a river, and dirt road with the mountains and trees. Possibility. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Oh, those would be some huge mountains have to make in trains. Oh my gosh. Uh, triple main line, one single locomotive with a bunch of intermodal behind it. Um, look at the details on these rocks here. Wow. Uh, Telephone lines going on both directions. Birds flying here. That would be, that'd be quite the build. That's an even more intense valley than the first one. Okay, what is even this? What kind of locomotive is this going through here? It's like one of the new ones Amtrak has been putting out here. It's hauling like foreign cars. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting dynamic here. Double main, um, bushes huge mountains. These peaks and these mountains are huge in what AI is making. This looks like a CSX single locomotive, one main line, it curves, um, a lot of rocky mountains here. This doesn't feel like Tennessee and Kentucky at all to me. Uh, is that another train line going through there? And then it's kind of foggy going through the basin here. A lot of grass. I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed at how much detail AI can get in grass images of, a, of like AI trains and landscapes and stuff. Now to do this project, I can only pick one of these and my selection is going to be option number one. This seems the most doable to me. The mountains don't seem egregious. Um, I think we can get this done. That's gonna be my project for a little bit. Uh, again, we don't have to expand this world. This just has to be a way where I can replicate this image right here to the best of my abilities in trains. So with that being said, let's head on into the build. All right, everybody, welcome into this new build happening here today on Danny B Train. So this was a fun project. This took me several days, several times hopping on and hitting record on trains to get done for you guys. Um, but overall, I had a great time on this build. This is gonna be, I guess you call a speed build series, if you will. This is episode number one. 
uh, we allowed AI to pick out the route that we are going to be building, or at least what the route, uh, the inspiration for the route, if you will. Um, so this was a lot of fun. We started off by just placing down our baseboards, getting our track picked out, and then after that, we just needed to go in and like set down all the track, kind of get it to match up to that uh, picture a little bit, just like it kind of winds a little bit. Um, and then after that, you know, it's just going in and getting everything straightened out. It's a double main line, get all that situated. Then it's time to figure out, okay, what's the height supposed to be? Because obviously our, our environment here is very hilly. So it's not all going to be flat at the bottom of this uh, valley, so to speak. Uh, which that's what this is, basically. It's a big valley here. And um, so we're kind of working with the track first and the little road that goes through. And that's what we're starting off with right here. That's what we're building around. Um, we're going in at this point and we're just uh, getting everything lined up the way it's supposed to be. Get the heights adjusted and just get everything overall uh, going the way it's supposed to be so we can start off this build. The longest part is honestly this right here where we're going in and just getting heights and figuring out where to do the terrain. The hardest part for any trains build that I've done in the past has always been terrains. Now I had an issue here at the start with the river where um, for, for whatever reason I was having an issue where the water was just there. Um, had to do some looking up online but we were able to figure that out. Um, as you can see how I placed down more water and it was still there but then we got it figured out and we learned how to uh, edit the environment notes and uh, go in and uh, also try to change up the way the river looks a little bit. I wasn't too happy with how it first looked when I put it down. The water was way too blue in my opinion. Um, but you know, after a few changes, uh, we were able to get the water looking exactly the way that I was hoping it would. Uh, obviously changing the colors a little bit there and until I come to a point where I was pretty happy with the watercolor. And once we had basically our first few things established, the tracks, the road, and the river, we were free at that point to go in and start really customizing this area. And uh, it's going to start off with doing all the terrain. So I'm going to shut up for a little bit and let you guys enjoy some music while we build this terrain because this is by far the longest and hardest part of this entire build. Now at this point right here, I found it easier to go back to the grid view because I was just, everything was just kind of blending together in texture view because I needed to make sure that my hills were looking pretty smooth in the transition areas here because obviously your tracks are up on a certain elevation, your roads at a certain elevation, but you want it to go smooth down to the river. So I learned that in this part of it, going 
over to grid view was a, just a better way for me to use the smoothing tools and get this to look exactly the way I wanted it. Now I did find a little bit on the hard side in order to do this transition because there were some kind of steep drop offs in terms of the elevation and going down to the road there so it, it did end up requiring a little bit of uh, creativity on my part um, but we'll get into that just a little bit further on into the video. And overall, once I was, for the most part, fairly happy with what I had, I was able to go ahead and start kind of just outlining the area for where the mountains are going to go. And this would prove to be, uh, in terms of setting up the terrain, making the mountains was definitely the hardest part because you don't want to have something too egregiously large, um, but at the same time, you want to have something that also looks realistic in terms of the image that AI uh, created for this route. So you're trying to go as close to uh, what the AI made as possible. And once we were uh, pretty happy with everything on the track position, it was time to go ahead and put down the ballast embankment. Um, I know you don't necessarily have to do this, but Nugget Trains taught me how to use this. And ever since he did, I've used it for anything that I have been building ever since. And uh, to me, this just adds some more realism to a route. Um, a lot of times if you see train tracks, um, yes, they, they are... Uh, sometimes pretty even to ground but also this is a hilly environment and hilly environments a lot of times railroads will create like large embankments with a lot of a lot of ballast stored up there so to me this has just always been uh, my new go-to now one thing we are doing compared to some other routes I've done in the past to make this easier we're keeping everything pretty much level from one end to the other so yes while it is kind of uh, up a little bit um, we wanted to be able to have this where uh, everything's going to be pretty even, so doing this embankment's a little on the easier side there. But um, I don't know if you can tell this right now, but uh, it was a little hard to get everything lined up correctly, so we did have to make some uh, adjustments there. And also, in terms of the height from some points on those hills, the gravel embankment is actually taller than the map itself. So, what we ended up having to do, this is where. Um, Yes, AI did help inspire this, but you do have to still take your own creative liberties in trains when building a route. And so we are going to end up putting down some of these NARM rocks. Now these are, uh, these became a huge favorite of mine. Um, if I have anything that needs like a cliff face, just using these to your advantage can really help bring out an environment like this. Um, for this one right here, for the most part, it just needs some straight up and down rocks. So you can also adjust these by rotating them to do the shift rotate and rotate the angle on them. It can be a big help as well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this little cliffside come out. So I'll let you continue watching the progress as we set down these NARM rocks.
don't know about you guys, but I always find that capping off little rock banks like this is probably the hardest thing for me. It's just so hard to, you know, especially when you're using Narm Rock 6 and 7 in particular, it's just so hard to make those transition well. Um, but I did find that I felt it was good, it was good to put some little, like, rock um, splotches, if, you, if that's even the right word, just along through here and just kind of, you know, creating some more or kind of off from it, but a little bit away from that big cliff side. But uh, overall, I was pretty happy with the way this ended up coming out. Still got a little bit more to finish up with it here, but uh, overall, I felt like this turned out really nice. And finally, it is time for the first mountain. We're doing the mountain that's on the right side of the river, away from the side that's not got the train tracks to start off with. And uh, yeah, really with this, it's just all about randomness in my opinion. I mean, you just gotta go, like just be a nut job with the uh, raise height tool there and just get it as high as you can, especially on the edges. And then just kind of have to use all your other tools at hand and just work it in. Um, as I said, this definitely is the hardest part when it comes to building routes is making mountains. I, I don't know a single person who builds train routes that honestly enjoys mountain making, but because of the scenes that a lot of us like to recreate in trains, it is the most important aspect of building a route in my opinion. Uh, if you want mountains, you've got to put the time in. You've gotta sit there and just you know click 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 and just make these mountains come to life now this is an this was an interesting technique i hadn't really done in the past um, i would actually use a tool and just make some lines essentially and so you're kind of like making some little natural like um what's the word i guess a valley and then you use the smooth tool and just start smoothing everything together um, overall i felt like this was a pretty good way for me to make the mountains that I was looking for and make it in a timely manner. And uh, this gives you an idea of why uh, that sometimes, yes, I think the grid area is great when doing uh, terrain like this, especially when you're trying to make things look very smooth, especially in those lower areas, more visible areas all along the tracks in the valley that we're going to be, you know, actually working in. But sometimes you have to turn the, the texture view back on because, as you can see, there's so much uh, shade in some of these steeper valleys. So this is where it is good to go back to texture a little bit and uh, just make sure nothing looks too crazy over here but overall a little bit a little bit of time with the smoothing tool and you can get all this situated and uh everything should be just fine um but yeah at that point i think i was pretty happy with the mountains on that side um the image did say like there were some look like telegraph lines over on the right on the left side of the train tracks but also some 
uh, some telephone poles that went along the road there. So we laid those down, and uh, this is a good part to kind of like uh, do that before you get into too much detailing. Get the small things out of the way. Um, I did see it look like a road was going down towards the river, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna assume this is like a boat ramp area by the river. I know I've seen plenty of places in the past in Tennessee that have areas kind of like this, a little just a little road that leads down to the river, um, so people can put their little john boats and things like that. Um, the river did seem a little um, not the greatest, so I did go in and I just kind of touched things up a little bit with our tool here. Especially right here, it's very narrow in this particular spot of the river because of uh, the way it was all kind of set up here. So, uh, take some time, look at the details along things like this, especially if it's something that's going to be um, maybe not in direct eyelight of where you're going to drive a train, but close enough that you, you know, if you go out to a, a exterior view, you could see it. So, just kind of go in and touch up some things like that. But uh, overall, I feel like I did pretty good on this part of it. And after we did that, it was time for mountains over on the left side. And uh, this was what I did all in the first day. This little part right here leading up to the conclusion of the mountains getting finished. Uh, after that, it was a lot of just days times where i'd go in and just do some more detail work on it um i think in total i think it probably took me about i think seven total days different time periods just going in and uh turn turning it on turning on trains and setting up obs and recording my progress so i could put it all in this video um, but this right here, the mountain part, thankfully this is fast forward for you guys because I cannot stress how long this part actually took. This part easily took, um, I want to say close to two hours doing just mountain work on all honesty. Like this, this is way faster in the finished video than what this actually took. But uh, I did... Uh, I feel like I went smoother on the left side after I did the first one the first time and uh, was overall happier with those mountains but those are going to be the ones closer to the train tracks when you're driving a train so uh, if you, you got to pick one side to be good the one closer to your view is probably the one you want to have done the correct way but yeah that's uh, about all there is for the mountains but still finishing up here in the finished product. And here we are in day number two, where at this point, it's time to start doing some detail. And uh, this is where we start laying down some shrubs. And I actually just went ahead and did a big copy paste deal just to get a lot started here. So uh, I kind of set up a little group of plant shrubs there and just kind of copy paste them and put them in various places because um, nothing is the exact same, but it can be similar. So we're just kind of taking this little group, mixing them in there. This is definitely a good starting point. Um, I recommend anyone do this if they are having a big build like this. Um, especially, you'll see as this progresses, you can do different things. You, you, this, this isn't going to look the exact same uh, everywhere you look uh, once all the other details and uh, splines are thrown in to kind of hide this. But... Um, this is definitely a good way to start off with any build. Oh, and I guess uh, my, my mountains weren't as smooth as I was as I thought they were. I did notice some places needed to be changed up midway through doing this, but uh, but that's okay. That's all part of the build right there. Then here in the middle, we just kind of went more, uh, just kind of all over the place, just just kind of spamming down the plant shrubs here. Um, definitely can go in and kind of fill in some more, but uh, you know, it, it was it was easier to copy paste on the edges and some of the bigger areas. Uh, but here, I like just going in and just spamming them down. Um, this part, 
Much like the mountains, it takes a lot more time than what you guys are seeing, thankfully, in the uh, time-lapse version of this. This did take a while to go in and just get all this same <laughs> shrub asset down here in the middle because it's just it's a lot of space it, it, it's a lot of space to fill in uh but but hey I, I did actually once we kind of put those in random then we actually use the copy paste and filled in some more so then you kind of have like some areas you know and then you kind of fill in some more clusters there uh but overall uh i felt like this was a good way to get this done on a faster pace uh but also looking really good in the end and then you can also go in and just kind of readjust some things if you don't like exactly where it went. Um, but I feel like this went very good so far. Now, some of my favorite trees to use in trains are these uh, tree maple assets, but also I like to throw in these maple shrubs as well. And so once I had a lot of the plant shrub asset already thrown down, I found it very good to throw in these maple shrubs here just to kind of help break up things a little bit and just add a little bit more. And from that point, I started actually then putting down the maple trees. Uh, there's a total of three. So if you just start off do tree maple one, Throw all those down where, where you want them, uh, and then you can go in and do maple number two after that. So uh, that's kind of what I did here. I just kind of basically you just randomly click where they're going to go. Um, nothing in nature is uh, the same, so just kind of have to be random with it, uh, just as uh, the good Lord intended, right?
Now personally, I'm pretty happy with the overall look and feel of all these trees. Um, definitely uh, could be cleaned up as you see, I'm kind of cleaning up some areas here. And uh, maybe with a little bit more time, uh, you could really go in and further detail some of these areas along the tracks. Um, but I, I felt like this is a good way to break things up. It's, you know, sim similar, obviously the environment's are the same, but um, it, it's a good way to kind of like, uh, what's, the, what's the right word here? It's a good way to make this environment feel like it just belongs correctly. Um, but overall, I was uh, pretty overall satisfied with that as we go in and then I decided that some of these uh, some of the assets of the lines going along the road um, especially with that cliff side I felt like they needed to be adjusted over to the right to the other side I feel like a, a telephone line like that would uh, not want to have them right up against the uh, cliff wall over there like that uh, I did also put down this barbed wire fence and just kind of ran it along just to just to keep the tracks kind of separated from the little road area going on over here um, but uh, then from that point on, this is a lot of uh, spline work, honestly. Um, using the JVC uh, track sides and grass and bushes and lots of stuff like that. This is where, um, you know, you do a lot of things with the single objects to make an area, first of all, have a lot of life to it, but then you wouldn't want to use individual grass. This is where grass splines are my friend. Um, just kind of plot those down and just spam away, go to town on them, and uh, just kind of, you know, really work those in. Now, really, when you're doing this, like, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, you don't even have to use the same grass splines every time. I think I found myself using some different ones on different days and times when I get on to do this. This is the part where it comes down to just doing a lot of, like, different little mini shifts on here. Um, where I just hop on, do some more detailing, and, uh, you know, just kind of do, do a little bit of time. And it's kind of funny, depending on the, really the day, the mood I was in, it would kind of uh, sometimes make what I did just feel a little bit different. Um, I did have some areas there where there was no trees, and I felt like, okay, we got to really cover the grass in there, because that's kind of more like just a little, little grassy hillside. Um, it doesn't have to have a tree in every square uh, aspect of it, but um, you do also need to mind the gaps, uh, especially especially closer to the tracks. Um, you don't necessarily have to worry about everything off in the distance, but certainly what you're going to be driving by, you want to add as much life as possible. So utilize the grass uh, splines as they are your very best friend when you are doing this.
Now, as I said, you can see that I'm kind of putting out the grass there a little bit further on into that area. And don't I might not even have to put it in there that far. That's just kind of more like I saw it, I started putting it in there. Um, as I said, you don't have to focus on everything off the distance because there's only so much you're going to be able to see from actually driving the trains. But um, And this is something I've had to teach myself. Um, I'm the worst at trying to touch up details that no one's ever going to see. Um, but when you're doing a project like this and you want to get done with it as fast as possible, um, you do have to teach yourself, okay, just focus on things that are close to the tracks. You don't have to worry on things that are so far off in distance. Now this little part right here, uh, everything is right there at the tracks essentially, so you do have to get in all the details right here. Here's a big area where there's more of an open, uh, open side of the hill. Um, definitely fill all that in. And uh, again, there's no right or wrong answer to where you put your grass blinds. You just have to make sure you cover in all the gaps as good as possible. Now overall, I feel like I was pretty happy with the way the grass was for the most part in areas around it. So at that point, uh, this is where you go in and do extra details, bushes, things like that. Because you don't want it to just be those standard shrubs that you threw down. Um, you know, a forest is full of a lot of plants. So uh, go in and, and take advantage and uh, really fill in all these areas. Just, just take care of them, you know. Just fill it all in. And likewise, uh, some other assets that I felt were really nice were these JVC grass and shrubs assets. Um, it, it's a good way to be different from all the other stuff you've already put down, but also really help add in some more life and character to these forests.
And as you can see, uh, I, I love those maple trees for the closer to the tracks areas. However, they would eat up so much memory if we tried to use all of those for the further details of the forest and the mountains. So therefore, I recommend you can get them all off the download station if you need them. The JVC trees are phenomenal to use in place. Um, just put down a big group of them, copy paste, and just spam away and fill in all the gaps up the mountain. Now, maybe I didn't have to do this, but I did choose to put down a big area of grasslands on the other side of the river. Again, it could be out of view for the most part from the tracks, but I did want to at least have some bit of detail on that side of the river as well. Because I've already done this much work on the stuff on the track side of the river, I feel like there should be somewhat of some detail so I went ahead and just spammed away at the grasses and uh, set up a new area on the other side just to put in a little bit of work there. And then similar to what we did on the other side, I spammed away at some plant shrubs here for a little bit. And then as soon as I kind of got those exactly the way I was hoping they would be, it was pretty much time then to go in and uh, keep doing some more touch-ups with some smaller shrubs and then we move on to the trees. Oh, but before we did the trees, I was I was thinking about doing um, a shortcut for some cliffs here, but when I saw it from the other side, I just uh, overall wasn't very happy with how red clay these rocks looked. I just felt like it didn't fit well here, so I removed all those and went back to my good old trusty Narm rocks. I guess this was, this was me at this point. I was honestly just trying to save some time because uh, I knew I was like I'm so close to being done with this part and. Uh, wanted to be done with it but also knew like this is too steep of a drop off to not have a cliff um so i decided to go ahead and just be like okay let's just get in here and get this done
that point, I was pretty happy with that uh, part of it, and I decided to go ahead and throw in some other stuff along the river and just kind of do a little bit more detail work on the river. This is stuff that you may not even have to worry about it, but I just thought, you know what, what the heck, let's just throw in some details. Because a river, you know, is full of life. Things live there, there's, there's grass, there's everything. Um, but yeah, so I was pretty happy with that. Threw in our uh, maple shrubs there, and then after that it was time for the maple trees, and then we could pretty much be on the road to being done with this. point I pretty much had all of the right side done at least all the stuff that needs to have some hard detailing done to it uh, I threw in some of these bush and grass and shrub assets in here just to kind of help uh, hide things in now just like I did on the other side I actually put this bush spline over on the back side of it so it kind of helped just blend in a little bit of a transition there so we're going to go in and put in the JVC trees. So this is what we're doing here. Uh, go in again, spam away at the JVC trees, make a little group here. And uh, at that point, just copy and then paste away. Fill in this area and make this look as good as you possibly can. Uh, so this is what I did for a little bit going into uh, the night. I had to pause, go to sleep, and then woke up and finish it up the next day. And from that point, that was going to be the final day of building on this. And everything else would get done um, uh, right after that. say this this was just such a a nice feeling to finally be putting down all these trees on this mountain because i knew from this point i was essentially done with part one of this ai inspired route now there was still some more details i knew i could probably do and some things that you can take creative liberty on um, i did kind of look around the area and just kind of put in a few more pieces of ground cover and things just to kind of help blend in a little bit more there um i did notice on the other side of the river i was like yeah we could probably use some bushes there just to just to fill it in a little bit it felt uh naked compared to the other side i felt like um, and especially on a certain point um the river is going to be a lot more visible compared to other parts of it um, so I just wanted to fill it in a little bit and just kind of, you know, take my own creative liberties on some things, uh, throw in some other things here and just blend in the areas good. Uh, and then I decided, hey, let's th then think about this a little bit. Uh, we're going to need some lights and uh, also threw down some rocks just to kind of add into the area, filled in this little corner here where this uh, road branches off to go down to the river. Um, I put a 
few lights along the little dirt road here so that if we are out here at night there can be some uh, light out here as well put one down by the river and just basically dropped a few down along the road as we went and until I was pretty much happy with everything and the way the road looked Now, although you couldn't see this in the AI image, um, what good would this little road be if there wasn't some form of life out here? So, I decided uh, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Let's put a little cabin that seems to also be out in the middle of nowhere. Um, set down the cabin, and at first I was going to use this bit of asphalt, but then I found this nice little wall asset and decided this might actually work better right here so that there is a little... Uh, duplex cabin if you will has been set up right here and uh, now we have just this random little place where there is somebody living all the way out here by the train tracks um, out here in the middle of nowhere so uh, yeah we've got a little cabin here it's got two two sides to it a little driveway got to put down some uh, shrubs kind of blend it in there a little bit and yeah we've got some some form of life here we've got mailboxes um, I'm gonna put down a, another light right here and yeah it's uh this is where again you can have some creative liberty and uh, I decided this is just a little house they've got an old truck another old pickup truck um, they've got an old semi truck out here and then just a newer truck so just a little of everything out here and uh, yeah that's what's fun about this I don't know what this necessarily is but it goes to the bottom of that wall so we can just pretend they have a basement area um, but yeah then went ahead and assembled a train up and that's it I think we have successfully built this area to the best of my ability um, based on what AI told me to create in this first part of it so this has been a lot of fun. I, I, I definitely uh, have enjoyed seeing other creators speed build series. Um, Nugget Trains does a good job. Uh, uh, wow It's Trains does a great job. Um, a lot of great builders here on YouTube building stuff and trains and I wanted to have something that I could do um, that was a speed build series but also I can kind of go into this more and create a little route. You know, this doesn't just have to be just a one-time only thing. We can expand on this and have AI create each new section that's going to go into this. So, I'm having a great time here. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying some of the cinematics here. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed watching this build. I know it's a long one. Uh, 50 plus minutes of, of building with a time lapse. Um, imagine how long that would be without the time lapse. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching today's video from Danny B Trains, and we appreciate you stopping by. Let me know down in the comments some more prompts. What would you like to see as the next addition to this route? Uh, drop those comments down below. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Leave a like on this video and tell the YouTube algorithm that you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.